Hey guys, welcome to today's practice. My name is Shona, I'm a yoga teacher, personal trainer and ex-gymnast and this sequence, well it was supposed to be a sort of rainy day sequence and it was raining here and then I finished the practice and the sun came out. So I guess you could say this is a practice to make the rain go away? Maybe. <laughs> it certainly is going to make you feel a little bit more energized. It's going to stretch your hips, your hamstrings. We're gonna work through the shoulders a little bit as well. And we finish off with some strength of the core and your glutes. It's the perfect way to break up a long day at the desk, which you know I'm really passionate about. And it's also just going to kind of wake up your brain a little bit more. There is also a little bit of a focus on what's called a sankalpa, and I explain what it is in the practice. We do a little bit of this as a sort of intentional meditation prior to the yoga practice. If you're not used to doing that kind of thing and you'd like to kind of just like get into it and start hitting the vinyasa straight away, just give it a chance. Because if you start practicing more intentionally, I promise you, you are going to get much more out of the yoga practice than just simply a bit of a stretch. This is going to be rejuvenating for mind, body, and dare I say it, spirit. So let's get on with the practice. Hello and welcome to your practice today. So we're going to actually start lying down on our backs. Come to a Shavasana position first. And just go ahead and interlace the fingers, extend the arms up above your head, point your toes, take a deep breath in, and just really stretch out here. Lengthen your body. And then go ahead, exhale, hug the knees into the chest. Rock from side to side, massage out through the lower back. And then I'm gonna come into Supta Baddha Konasana. So, we're gonna bring the soles of the feet together and let the knees rest out wide. I'm gonna position you here first so that you're relatively comfortable but still feeling an opening through the hips. So if you want to make this a little more intense on your groin, bring your heels closer to your, to your buttocks. If, however, that's a bit too intense, then you can take your heels a little bit further away. Remember, soles of the feet together, knees out wide. Now, for your hands, you can either place them onto your tummy and that's gonna give you a bit more of a tactile connection to your breath. Otherwise, if you want to open into the shoulders in preparation for all of our dynamic kind of vinyasa work, our downward dog, then you can take your arms up above your head, take hold of either elbow or maybe just grabbing the wrists and allow the shoulders to open here. Or it's more like you're allowing the shoulders to kind of come into flexion, which is opening for your lats. Allowing the scapula to spread apart. Okay, so before we begin, what I want you to do is bring to mind right now your sankalpa. Now sankalpa is the Sanskrit word for intention. It can be broken into two parts. San means to become one with and kalpa, well, it has several meanings. It can mean time, but it can also mean a subconscious mind. So go ahead and begin that breath sequence, inhaling and exhaling. And towards the end, of these 10 breaths, we can then come to realize our intention for this practice. Start to allow the breath to be a little bit more restricted on that inhalation and on the exhalation. Slight restriction at the back of the throat for ujjayi breath. And as you come into this final exhalation, really allow your body to relax. And we'll just bring to mind what it is that we want to 
connect with for this practice. Perhaps for you it's to energize, perhaps it's to accept whatever that sankalpa is. I'm going to bring your mind, your, your attention back to it throughout this practice. Alrighty, let's get moving. So let's come to just bring the knees back in together. I'm sure you're ready for that. <laughs> Hug the knees into the chest. Start to rock from side to side, massaging out through the lower back here, and then come back to stillness. Keep holding the right leg in, let the left leg extend all the way down to the floor for Pavan Mukhtasana, which means wind removing pose. We're massaging here the ascending colon. So try to relax your shoulders. Notice if there's like a kind of impingement sensation at the front of your hip. This may mean that we need to open the front of the hips a little bit more. So you can go ahead and like kind of pull the, the femur away from you as I'm doing here. Pull it almost like you're trying to pull it out of the joint. Obviously you're not going to just to create a little bit more space and then try to hug it out to the side and then in towards the side ribs. Notice if that helps. And then we'll go ahead and take the leg across the body down for a twist. So coming all the way across, extending your right arm out back behind you, relaxing into this position, relaxing your stomach, noticing any areas that are still holding tension here. Are you clenching your jaw, are you clenching your butt? Like there's all these areas that we kind of carry tightness in. We wanna to try to let them go for this practice. Come back to center, hug that knee into the chest, and then release it all the way down to the floor. Go ahead, interlace the fingers, stretch your body in two, lengthen, hug the left knee into the chest, squeezing it all the way in. Again, notice for any impingement sensation, pay attention to where you're gathering tension and tightness in your body. It's giving you clues as to where you should take, not just your yoga practice, but your strength training practices, your mobility practices. The yoga practice is like a self body awareness kind of test, I guess. And it gives you this opportunity to assess everything. All right, we'll take the leg over across the body and then come into the twist. Left arm extends back behind you. Relax the face, relax the eyes, relax the jaw. Everything sort of softens here. Just breathing. And we'll come back to center. Good. Hug both knees in towards the chest and then go ahead, interlace the fingers, extend your arms up, stretching. Oh, feels so good. Hug the knees into the chest, squeeze it in and then place your feet on the floor, hip distance apart for some Setu Bandhasana. Bridge pose. What we're gonna do first is just turn the palms to face up at the ceilings. And we want to make sure that the knees are directly uh, in line with our hips here. So they're not spraying out to the side. They're not kind of knocking inwardly. They're just in alignment. Femurs are pointing straight. And then from there, pressing into your feet, we wanna to begin to tuck the tailbone and lift the hips off the floor, rolling the spine off one vertebra at a time, almost like your spine was kind of a pearl necklace that you were lifting off the floor, one pearl at a time. And then we're gonna lower it back down. So visualize those pearls coming back down to the floor, one pearl, one vertebra at a time. And then ahead, again, go ahead, lift up, and then slowly lower down. And this is about cultivating spinal awareness. Really, really important. It's great to have spinal stability, but we want the spine to be able to move. So just keep moving in a sort of fluid way here, using the breath as kind of like a metronome for your rhythm. Okay. And then from there, lift the hips all the way up as high as you feel you can without having a big arch in your back. So I really want you to tuck your tailbone and feel that your glutes are squeezing to keep your pelvis in a posterior pelvic tilt. Interlace the fingers behind you, walk the shoulder blades in together and press your pinkies into the floor so that you can get a little bit of leverage to push your sternum towards your chin. Good, just holding here. And then slowly lower that spine back down to the floor. One vertebra, one pearl at a time. Hug the knees into the chest, rock up and down until you get enough momentum to rock all the way up, hands to the floor, come into cat cow. So we'll take the knees hip distance apart, the feet hip distance apart, the hands shoulder distance apart. Spread the fingers nice and wide here. Kind of press into all 10 fingers. So we're starting to warm up the forearms as well, making sure that we're not just dumping all our weight into the wrists, into the base of the palm. Want your fingers to be taking some of that as well. Now let's drop the belly down, lift up through the head and the hips, heart opens, shoulders pull back, opening into our chest here. And then belly button to the spine, push the floor away, head down, rounding the spine. Head down, good, inhale, drop the belly, lift the head and the hips, heart opens, shoulders pull back. 
Exhale, belly to the spine, push the floor away, head down. Really using that ujjayi breath now. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale. And exhale. Good, come back into a neutral spine. Spreading those fingers wide again, pressing into all 10 fingers, making sure the index and thumb are really pushing into the mat here. Tuck the toes, lift the knees off the floor and press back into downward facing dog. Keep the knees bent. Let's just first open into the shoulders. So push into the floor. Don't try to draw the shoulders down the back here. I actually want you to squeeze your shoulder blades together and up towards your ears to activate through your upper trapezius. This is super important, particularly look for everything, but the upper traps are not bad. They're only overactive if you haven't worked on developing your lower traps. Now, for those of you that are like, why is she talking so much? Can you just <laughs> keep breathing, inhaling and exhaling? For those of you that are new to my practice, what I like to do is kind of talk through the why of why we do things in the yoga practice, why I do things biomechanically, why I do things anatomically, so that you understand this. Breathe here. I find it much more motivating to understand this stuff. Okay, so from here, what I want you to do is just walk the feet up towards the hands here. Good, and then we'll just come and hang out here in a forward fold. So feet are hip distance apart, take hold of either elbow and just swing your body from side to side. What I want you to feel like is that your, your body is literally dangling from your hips and we're trying to decompress the lower spine here. So as much as possible, as much as your hamstrings, muscles at the back of the legs will allow, we want the hips to lift up. And that facilitates gravity to pull down in our upper body a little bit more to really separate that vertebra. Oh, it's such a good feeling when you can get nice and loose here. Okay, release the arms, come back into stillness, and we're gonna very slowly unroll all the way up to standing. Now I want you to imagine that string of pearls again. I want you to feel as though we're stacking one pearl on top of the other, one vertebra, as we unroll all the way up to standing. Now your arms reach up to the sides. Take the arms all the way up, palms together, look up to the ceiling here, and then exhale, hands come down through prayer, just coming into a standing position. We're then going to interlace the fingers behind the back, hug the shoulder blades in together, lift up through the chest, look up to the ceiling again, squeezing through the shoulders. And then as you exhale, fold forward and aim to bring your pinkies down towards the floor. Now, again, the more you can get your hips up and fold forward, I know that's going to lengthen through the hamstrings quite a lot, but the more you're going to get a stretch for those shoulders as well. So coming into shoulder extension here. Good. And then go ahead, release the arms. We're going to unroll all the way up to standing. Arms reach up and exhale. Hands come down through the heart center. Perfect. Interlace the fingers, take the hands to the back of the head, elbows out to the side. Inhale, look up towards the ceiling. And then as you exhale, again, we're gonna roll down, elbows come in together, stretching through the spine here quite a lot as you round forward. Hands come towards the floor, bend your knees as much as you need to, to do so. And then from there, we're gonna take the fingertips to the mat, step the right, actually we'll step the left leg back into a lunge. Now, when you come into this lunge position, I want you to go quite far, making sure that your front shin, that right shin is vertical and that your knee is directly over your ankle. From here, we're gonna drop the back knee down to the floor and then lift the arms all the way up to the ceiling. Inhale, lifting the body, lengthen. Look up to the ceiling if you can and hug the shoulder blades in towards your ears. So we do want scapular elevation here, lengthening up. And then exhale, hands come down either side of that front foot. We're going to straighten the front leg as we shift the hips back into Hanumanasana. Actually, it's not Hanuman. We're not going straight into the splits. We're going into Adha Hanuman, so the half split pose. So as you shift your hips back, just allowing yourself to fold forward over that front leg so we get a big stretch of the hamstring. We're not gonna stay here too long because I know it can be intense straight away. So now we're gonna move back into crescent lunge. So this time, bend through the front knee, back into the lunge. Lift the back knee off the floor, lift your body up towards the ceiling, arms reach out to the side, inhale, reaching up. And then open out into warrior two, back foot flattens, exhale, open the hips, open the arms, have a look at your front leg, make sure that that knee is not moving into knee valgus, so we're not letting that knee drop in. We're activating through our glute to make sure that the knee tracks directly over the ankle. 
Good. From here, flip the front palm, reach it up and back, reverse warrior, stretching through that side body. The bottom hand comes to the back leg. And then from there, reaching forward, take the right hand down to the inside of the right foot. Using your shoulder to help you open your chest here, take that top left arm and reach it all the way up and forward, hugging it in towards your ear. Take a deep breath in here. Sink the hips if you can, exhaling. Maybe see if you can take that back leg a little bit further back here, deepening the position. Look down to the floor and take that left hand down to the mat. Let the back heel come off and reach the right arm up towards the ceiling, twisting here. Just watch that that back foot doesn't start to sickle out to the left. We want to hug it towards the invisible middle midline here. Good. And then from there, look back down. And we're going to step the back leg straight up so that we come into the forward fold. Good. Shake out your head. Yes and no. Unroll all the way up to standing. Inhale, arms reach up, palms together. Exhale, hands come back to the heart center, holding here in Tadasana. Just take a moment to regather the breath, a sense of calm, and also to bring back to mind your sankalpa. So for me, I'm just trying to reconnect with what it is to honor my body, to truly honor my body. Bring to mind your sankalpa. What was your intention? If it was to rest, then perhaps this next set, you're just gonna check in with every variation you take. Am I choosing the intention of relaxation here? How can I maintain a calm, but steady, but joyful connection to my practice. Okay, so fingertips come to the floor. We're gonna do it on the other side. <laughs> this time we're gonna step the right leg back into the lunge. This time the back knee comes down to the floor. We're gonna take the arms and body up towards the ceiling as we inhale, arms reach. Remember to hug the elbows and hug the shoulders in towards your ears here. Exhale, hands come back down to the floor. Adha Hanuman, front leg straightens, body folds forward over that front leg. Take it easy, exhaling into it. Inhale, move forward back into the lunge. This time back knee lifts off. We reach up into crescent lunge. Exhale into warrior two. Back foot turns out, hips open, arms extend. Belly pulls in. Just notice, is your pelvis anterior, in, anteriorly tipping forward? So we want to try to get the posterior tilt. Now, as soon as you tuck your tailbone, your front knee might start to tip inward. I want you to make sure that that left knee is directly over your left ankle. Flip the front palm, reach up and back, reverse warrior, inhale. Exhale, hand comes down to the inside of the foot. Your top arm reaches forward and we're lengthening, hugging the shoulder up into the ear. Again, watch that anterior pelvic tilt. Try to tuck your tailbone here. Breathe, press into the back foot as well. Looking down to the floor, take that right hand, place it down. Left arm goes up towards the ceiling as the back heel comes off. Good, from here, gazing forward, maybe without hands, try to step forward, challenging your left hip stability into the forward fold. All righty, just hang out here. Shake out your head, yes and no. Let's take another spinal roll. Inhale, arms reach up, lengthen. Exhale, hands back into Tadasana. And prayer pose. All right, take your feet out to the edges of the mat with the toes turning out. We're gonna come down into Malasana. Now, if you have trouble in Malasana, if your hips are super tight, you find hard to come into a squat position, you can do this on a chair or you can do it on blocks. You can raise your heels even, that can help. So sometimes folding up your mat and just raising the heels. Sometimes it's ankle mobility, calf mobility that actually stops us from being in this position. So. We're just going to come and sit in Malasana and you're going to bring your hands into prayer position. You're going to try to push the knees out to the side. We're just going to hang here. Okay. So I would either close my eyes or you can watch me. I'm just going to be talking you. <laughs> I'm not going to be doing much, but I want to talk you through the benefits of coming into a deep squat and they really relate to digestion as much as they relate to hip health. So when we come into this position, what we're doing is we're compressing all the lower abdominal organs, but especially our ascending and descending colon. And what this can do, this massage, or if you will, is as it compresses, 
right? Pressure builds up either side of the organ. And when we come in to release it, which isn't yet, you guys are just still hanging here, breathing. I know it's tough. But what we're doing is creating that pressure buildup. So when we release, then all that blood flow comes through that area, okay? And as we do this over time, we're improving that kind of circulation to that area. This is just one of the ways in which this is really beneficial. It's obviously also beneficial for your hips to come into this position. It's also beneficial for your spine. But sometimes we neglect, you know, just the, in, the deeper internal benefits that these positions can have and that they were intended for. Okay. I think we've had enough. <laughs> Let's bring the hands down to the floor. Bring the feet together, take the knees out very, very wide. So I'd almost come side onto your mat, taking those knees out and taking your arms forward, almost like a child's pose, but where your hips are like way further forward and we're getting into the groin a little bit more. And we're just gonna stack our forearms, rest our forehead onto our hands and just hold it here. Breathing in and breathing out. Walk your hands over to the left side, reaching out of that right hip, come back to center reaching over to the other direction, nice. And then come back to center. Pull forward into an all fours position and then press back into downward facing dog. Walk out through the heels here, shake out your head yes and no. Remember, we still want active traps. So pushing the floor away, squeezing the shoulder blades together. Inhale, come forward into a high push up position. Draw the shoulders away from the ears, now activating through your lats. Squeeze your glutes and slowly lower down, strengthening through Chaturanga Dandasana. If you need to lower your knees, go ahead and do so. From here, inhale, we're gonna come into cobra position, activating our upper back muscles, drawing the shoulder blades down the back. Now keep that position here where your elbows are really hugging together. Draw, squeeze your glutes, draw your belly in and push into all 10 fingers to lift knees, hips and thighs off. Upward facing dog, but notice my back isn't sagging. I'm actually really active through my back. Open through the chest here. Glutes are squeezing to protect the sacrum. And then exhale, press back into downward facing dog. Let's do that again. Inhale, come forward, high push up. Exhale, lower down, anterior, uh, posterior pelvic tilt as we lower down here as much as possible. And then inhale, either cobra, squeezing through the upper back. And if you're going there, upward facing dog, knees, hips and thighs come off the floor. Exhale, press back, downward facing dog. Let's do it one more time for good luck. And this time really connect to the breath. Inhale, high push up. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, cobra or up dog. Exhale, press back, downward facing dog. Beautiful. Bend your knees, look forward, just step or hop to a cross seated position at the top of your mat. We're going to do a little bit of strength work before we come into a twist and then Shavasana and then you are done. Okay, so from here, we're going to take the hollow body hold position and we're going to aim to hold it for 20 seconds. So what you're going to do for hollow body position is coming onto your back, knees bent, feet flat, hip distance apart. I just want you to take the arms behind your ears and try to stack the right hand over the left hand. So we're like really straighten the arms and we're gonna use our arms to help us lift our head. So it means we don't have to crunch so much through our neck. Okay, so squeezing here. I'm gonna lift my head and shoulders off the floor and pull my rib cage down. I'm just here in this position. Now from here, this is variation one. Variation two, you're just gonna lift your feet off the floor but keep your knees bent. And what we're trying to do is keep our spine on the floor and keep the belly down. So don't let it blow up towards the ceiling. We want to feel as though it's as flat as it can possibly be here. Okay. Now, as we feel like we can handle it, we're going to start to take our legs a little bit straighter. Maybe they're going to be all the way straight. Maybe they're going to be slightly straight, maybe slightly bent. Okay. And we're going to hold here for one, two, three, four, stay strong, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, stay with me, 19, and 20. Relax down. Good. Hug the knees into the chest. Place the feet flat onto the floor. Glute bridges. Hug that left knee in. Right leg is down. We're going to lift the hips off the floor. No lower back bend. The point of doing that hollow body position was to get you to feel that posterior pelvic tilt. So even if it means you only get an inch off the floor, I'd rather that than you having a big back bend here. Let's lower the hips down. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 
15, 16, 17, 18, 19. Keep them up, 20, change sides, keep the hips high, tucking the tailbone. Let's go, lower down and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, and 20. Good, hug the knees into the chest, start to rock from side to side. Massage out through your lower back. Beautiful work, guys. Come to interlace the fingers. Extend your legs, extend your entire body. Stretch out here, lengthening, lengthening. People pulling you in opposite directions and then exhale, they let go. You relax, arms down by your side. Palms face up at the ceiling. Shavasana is to be respected. It is a really important pose. Please don't skip over this. We're gonna stay here. I'm gonna stay right here with you. Now, if you're feeling it in your lower back here, maybe you're your psoas is a little tight, something to be aware of. If you feel like you're being pulled into a big back bend here, take the feet out wide, bend the knees and let the knees drop in together for a little bit of internal rotation, which will just take the pressure off your lower back here. Okay, wherever you've decided to take your Shavasana, close your eyes. I highly encourage placing something over your eyes here. Please don't skip this. I know it's so easy to think that, you know, I've done the practice, I've done the active bit. This is just the time wasty, relaxy bit and I don't need to do it. But the rest is where everything happens, where all the magic happens. It's where we start to actually encourage the nervous system to move into a parasympathetic state. Parasympathetic nervous system is the part of us that is our rest and digest mode. I want you to take a deep breath in for two seconds and then we're gonna exhale for four, three, two, one, this time inhale for one, two, three. Exhaling for six, five, four, three, two, one. Try that again for three, inhale one, two, three. Light pause, exhale six, five, four, three, two, one. Staying here. Bring to mind your sankalpa your intention for practicing. We maintain that sankalpa throughout the Shavasana as we allow our body to fully surrender here. Use the breath to take you deeper into relaxation and then let go of focus on anything. Allow your mind to wander without getting trapped into any rumination. If you find you are caught in a ruminating cycle or loop, come back to the breath and use that exhalation to pull you deeper into a state of surrender. bring you out of Shavasana. So for now, just allow yourself to rest. closed and your body still just begin to welcome in a deeper breath slowly start to move through the tips of your fingers and toes come to interlace your fingers extend your arms up above your head stretch up point the toes and then go ahead hug the knees into the chest squeezing the knees all the way in let yourself roll onto your side and then just push yourself up to a seated position palms together prayer pose Gently bowing the head, fingertips come in between the eyebrows, taking a moment to honor your body, the gift of the practice, a sense of gratitude for all that your body does for you. 
Thank you for practicing with me today. Namaste. I'll see you on the mat again soon.